My special guest is here. My special guest is Karen Ramsey. I was right. Oh my God. <laughs> she, you guessed it? Oh. <laughs> won't let me on today. I don't know what's wrong, but um, hi, Karen. Oh, look at that background. Oh, it's so amazing. Okay. So first of all, I want to make Karen, I'm going to spotlight Karen. Okay. All right. So Karen's on the spotlight for everyone and um, people will be trickling in. Everybody's joining. It's exactly seven. I want to say thank you very much, Karen, for being here. Oh, and I'm excited. <laughs> yes. And for those people that don't know, there might be one person out there that doesn't know who you are and what you specialize in. Can you please let us know your biggest passions in life and some of your experience on a healthy raw vegan lifestyle? My biggest passion is really uh, spreading the vegan and raw food message. It's been my passion since 1989. Even before then, I mean, I grew up as a vegetarian. I've been a vegetarian for 52 years. I became a vegetarian for moral reasons, but did not realize the effects of the dairy business and the egg business. And that didn't come until many, many years later, until 1989. I have been vegan since 1989, but vegetarian way longer than that, since I'm age 17. Just spreading this message has been the biggest passion of my life. I personally had a lot of health problems. I had severe cystic acne for over 25 years and was on a lot of dangerous drugs went to three different dermatologists. They all told me it was genetic and I didn't have to change my diet. And it was crazy that I had a father and a grandmother who were living a whole foods, plant-based and raw food lifestyle. No way. <laughs> yeah. And I ignored them. Oh, come on. <laughs> I thought they were crazy. In 1921, my grandmother had asthma and emphysema. The doctors at that time in 1921 told her that she had three or four months to live because of the emphysema being so serious. They gave her whatever drugs they had back then, and then they said they couldn't do anything for her anymore. Somebody brought a book to my grandmother in the, while she was in the hospital. It was called The Mucusless Diet Healing System. It came out in 1918, three years before she was really sick. She read that little book while she was in the hospital. And overnight, she went to a plant-based diet and pretty impressive results. As we know, that's what happens. We get pretty impressive results. She became a vegan before that word ever existed. And I grew up with her healing story, but ignored it because I grew up in the 50s and the 60s when processed food was invented. And mm -hmm. I loved it. I loved Wonder Bread and I loved cold cuts and potato chips and Oreos. Those were my favorite foods. Yes. And so it, it took a long period of time for me to understand why my grandmother and my father didn't go to medical doctors, why they weren't sick, like other people who I knew, why they were living the way that they lived. It was both for first for moral ethical reasons, and then for their health as well. And I learned a lot from both of them that I took with me later on. Then my own son had asthma and chronic ear infections as a young child, starting at like five weeks old. And I, that's when I hit the roof. That's when I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to a vegan and whole food diet. And that really helped him. And in like three months, it cleared up my skin back in the early nineties. And then uh, 1994, I went to raw food because I just started doing more research. I still had scarring on my face and my son was still having some ear infections. So 
I went to raw vegan and with my kids and his asthma and ear infections completely gone at that point with the raw food and all the scarring I had from the cystic acne just vanished in a very short time. It spoke to me about how powerful this way of living is if done, if done correctly. Since then, I have been speaking around the world. I've written numerous books. I have um, three physical books, um, Creating Healthy Children Through Attachment Parenting and Raw Foods, Heal and Prevent Autism, Natural Solutions That Work, and a recipe book with 115 easy, pretty well combined recipes, simple recipes to live on a daily basis, this lifestyle. And I've done loads of talks and book tours around the world trying to inspire people to stop eating animal foods and processed foods. I've been a vegan and raw food health coach since 1998. And then in 2015, I wanted to bring people in to help me spread the message. And so my biggest passion right now is bringing in students into my vegan coach certification, which is a raw food program focusing primarily on raw. I have wonderful students in my programs. I wanted to say that for anyone who hasn't met Karen in person, it's very evident that she really cares. She's really doing this because this is her life purpose and this is what she was born to do. Just help people help themselves and spread the message. And I'll leave the link to her books and her website and her coaching program. I'll leave it in our private Facebook group. And I'll leave it below this video as well. And I wanted to say that, um, thank you very much, Karen, because I didn't know a lot of those things about you. Also, real quick, I want to say you made my day when you came to one of my talks at Woodstock and I saw <laughs> your face in the audience and I was like, oh no, <laughs> you do a good job here. Karen Ramsey is in the audience. <laughs> but um, I just really love your approach. I love how simple your recipes are, but they're so good. I remember you made key lime pie for me. For, for me, for everyone at Woodstock, specifically hey, me. Hey, I like that you said it was for you. That's the way <laughs> you feel. Yes, because I could eat it. You know, I don't eat nuts. I don't eat lots of these dehydrated things, but you didn't, like, I don't think anything was dehydrated in the key lime pie, right? Yeah. It was, yo, and it was so good. And it was so simple. simple. And uh, that's what I love. 